Hi, Walt Garrick here. I'd like to present a video on spade casting tips and techniques, faults and corrections that should be able to help you. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about line management. Those twisting, looping lines laying on the water or in your trigger fingers that will tangle everywhere from your feet to the reel. This method is one that I find effective and easy to use for all shooting lines. Begin by pointing the rod tip towards the line, strip back to your sweet spot, and then pinch the two lines that you've retrieved into your middle finger and your thumb. Strip it back about halfway, lead into your cast, sweep around, and go right into your forward cast. Now I begin stripping back to my sweet spot. Locate that in my top hand. Pinch the two lines on the water between my thumb and my finger. Strip back. Loop it under my bottom hand. Sweep around and make the cast. Now that the shooting line is in my trigger fingers, pay close attention on to when and how I release them. For maximum line performances, a clean and well-dressed line is essential. To keep your lines floating high, shooting farther, I use Endura Fly and Spay Line Dressing. I find this dressing to outlast the competition, floats higher, and remains the slickest. Now that you've placed the two lines in between your middle finger and thumb, with longer strips back with your bottom hand, keeping the lines separated, you can either split the length in half, or you may loop them onto your little or index fingers of your bottom hand, which is called triggering which will allow you to cast and release the line or you can either pick it up off the water from the first method. I find these methods to be very effective, easily done, and has a least opportunity for tangle. Marking your running and shooting line with the sweet spot can be an effective visual point for preparing you for your casts. All lines have a preferred sweet spot. With a marker, I will make about a 6 inch mark on the line to designate the proper weight and length needed outside the rod tip for maximum performance and easy casting. Now with the rod tip down, I strip back the sweet spot mark into my top hand, do my line management, and get ready for my cast. Creating a proper D-loop is essential in preparing you for a powerful forward cast. When setting up for the D-loop, speed is your enemy, as this cast shows. Slow and smooth is the key to maximizing your rod's performance. Once you sweep around, you must allow the speed and weight of the line to reload the rod, set up the D-loop, which leads into your forward cast. Now from a side angle, you'll notice the sweep around, the body rotation, and leading into my forward cast. Now in slow motion, you'll notice the placement of my line outside the rod tip. The rotation of the body, the sweep around, the turn of the anchor line, forming the D-loop into my forward cast. Preparing my cast to set up the anchor point, setting my anchor point, and now the slow sweep around will set up the D-loop, preparing me for my forward cast. Keeping your eye on the anchor is critical in determining the direction of the forward cast. As the anchor line turns to the casting direction, then be sure to create two parallel lines and proceed to always cast inside the anchor line. This procedure will create powerful and tight looped casts. Always keep your eye on the anchor. As the anchor line turns, it will give you the direction of your cast. As it begins to turn, there is a slight hesitation with the sweep around which allows for the proper reloading of the rod from the momentum of the line which creates the D-loop. Once this is achieved, it's time for the smooth forward motion for the forward cast. Remember to cast with parallel lines and always cast tight inside the anchor line. From the side view, Notice the anchor line turn to create the parallel lines for your forward cast. Now in slow motion, 
with the proper setup, you'll be able to see the anchor line turn, parallel lines, forward cast. Now, to make your cast more fluid and easier, you might want to think about putting some rhythm into it. Come up with a lyric. Like, what I did was, keep your eye on the anchor point, make your forward cast. Little things like this can help you become more fluid in your casts. Try some things and find something that works for you. Herky jerky casts such as this one will never allow you to have the performances and the smoothness and the fluidity that you would like to achieve during your two-handed casting. Sloppy casts are usually caused by too much speed and lack of smoothness. Don't force your hands through these casts. Let the rod and line do the work for you. Speed and power are achieved differently. When the top hand is rushed through the cast, it creates speed. The bottom hand creates the power by fluidly and powerfully pulling that hand towards your upper arm to complete the cast. Notice the power of the bottom hand. Again in slow motion, notice the D-loop form and the progressive power of the bottom hand pulling to the top arm to complete the cast. You are the conductor of your own spay casting symphony. During this slow motion, notice the sweep around, the anchor line turn, and then I go parallel into my forward cast. It's a privilege to be associated with the leading manufacturers such as Hardy, Fenwick, Rio, Airflow, and Royal Wolf. With the many rods available today, it can be quite time consuming to match up lines and tips for the individual caster's needs. For both me and my students, it's time well spent as I enjoy watching them excel in their casting and their two-handed fishing. Remember, after the swing, every cast begins with a straight up, slow and gentle lift. What I just did there was I pushed my top hand with too much speed and force therefore driving the line down and crashing into the water. Now in this cast, I noticed that the line swept from right to left. And that is caused by over rotating the body during the cast. You do not want to rotate your body once you begin your forward casts. It must stay stationary so you cast in a straight plane. In other words, you start your forward cast, stop your body motion at the same time to keep the rod traveling in a straight forward plane. Once again, begin with a slow gentle lift, keep my eye on the anchor, and a straight forward cast by keeping the rod in a straight plane. Everyone would like to make the perfect cast every time. But I don't find this possible due to changes in wind, currents, water depths, and changing distances for the back D-loop. The ever so critical anchor point placement can be changed by these conditions resulting in a change of your rhythmic casting. So now it's time to make adjustments and get back to performing the perfect cast. Now I'd like to demonstrate the differences between the snake roll, the lazy snake roll, and the circle casts. These casts can prove to be very powerful and effective when performed properly. These may seem confusing, similar, and different, but each cast will have its time and place pending conditions. You'll see the snake roll is going to be a much tighter, tighter loop in front of me. It's it, and the touch, and you're going to cast off. Notice how quick and little my hands move in order to make the snake roll. With a gentle lift and a quick circular motion of my hands, sweep around, touch, forward cast into my snake roll. Again in slow motion, notice the tight loop, the touch, and the forward cast. 
lazy snake roll is going to be up and around kind of easy touch and make the cast off that's to me is a more of a lazy snake roll you want to always remember to rotate your body to get yourself in position for that cast on where you want it to go so touch and cast now in slow motion notice this larger loop the touch in the forward cast. When making a circle cast, you just want to come up, around in front, and make your cast off. This cast requires a much larger circular loop. With this circle cast, you're able to change directions of up to 90 degrees. It's a great cast for a very hard wind to your back blowing downstream. Today for these demonstrations, I use my favorite equipment and line combination. The rod is the Hardy Zenith 8 weight, 13 and a half footer. The line is the Airflow 450 grain Scandi Compact with Rio 15 foot 8 weight Versi slash replacement tips. This hybrid line combination can be achieved by first matching the Rio grain weight match tips to the rod and then matching them to a properly grain weighted airflow Scandi compact line. With this hybrid line combination totaling of approximately 50 feet you'll be able to make all the spay casts with the ability to shoot long lines with ease. To learn more about line combinations, matching of rods, equipment, casting, and spay fishing allow me to be your host and instructor to help you become the spaycaster that you are striving to be. Now let me get this straight. Put the lime in the coconut.